Kawa Ijin Volcanic Lake on the island of Java is the most acidic lake in the world, with a pH level that dips as low as 0.2. That's enough to dissolve metals and burn skin on contact. Plus, the gases emanating from the lake are so deadly, they can cause instant respiratory paralysis and death. You would think no one would ever venture anywhere near this hell on Earth, but you'd be wrong. Locals not only mine a volcanic vent on the side of the lake for solidified sulfur, but around 300 tourists travel to the lake each day. So you're probably wondering what makes the risk of death worth the trip. Well, during the day, Kawa Ijin's Crater Lake captivates with its vivid turquoise hue, reflecting the surreal beauty of its highly acidic waters, and the surrounding landscape unfolds in a panorama of breathtaking views where the lush green slopes contrast with the rugged volcanic terrain, creating a scene that is as mesmerizing as it is dramatic. But one of the most famous attractions is the Blue Fire, which are a natural phenomenon caused by the combustion of sulfuric gases escaping from the volcanic vents at high temperatures, creating striking blue flames that are best seen at night or in the early morning hours before sunrise. The turquoise water of this deadly volcanic lake is so acidic it has a pH level that dips as low as 0.2. To give you a comparison, concentrated hydrochloric acid is extremely corrosive and can have a pH level close to zero. The acid in the lake is so strong that an aluminium soda can sizzles when it touches the lake and it can completely dissolve carbonate rocks. But the acid lake alone is not what makes this area so deadly. There are also gases emanating from the water, such as sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. These gases, particularly sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide, pose significant health risks to anyone exposed to them without proper protective equipment. Tourists who visit the lake come prepared with gas masks and minimize their exposure to the gases. But as for the locals who work the mine, not all of them can afford gas masks, so they resort to using a cloth or towels soaked in water in an attempt to filter out the harmful gases. To earn money for their families, locals mine the area for solidified sulfur. As sulfur-laden gases are released from the volcanic vents, they are directed through pipes. As the gases travel through the pipes, they cool and condense into liquid sulfur. This liquid sulfur then flows out of the pipes and solidifies onto the ground into a more easily collectible form. You will often see a worker spraying water from a hose to cool down the hot sulfuric gases escaping from the volcanic vents. This cooling process helps the gases to condense more quickly into a liquid form. The sulfur, which is a deep red color when molten, pours slowly from the ends of these pipes and pools on the ground. As it cools, it solidifies into pure sulfur, turning from red to a bright yellow color. Once it has solidified, workers will use poles to pry up the sulfur so it can be picked up and put in baskets. Miners carry their heavy baskets of sulfur from the mine on the crater floor to the top of the crater, which is approximately three kilometers or about 1.9 miles. Each basket of sulfur can typically weigh between 40 to 50 kilograms each or about 80 to 100 pounds. The walk typically takes around one and a half to two hours, depending on your fitness level and pace. Once at the top of the crater, they carry their baskets to the weighing station. The work is so hard and the trip takes so long, they can only do one trip per day. The miners risk their lives and do all that hard work to earn the equivalent of just 12 to $18 a day or 18 cents per kilogram. But the miners say it's excellent pay for who would otherwise be impoverished farmers. Being exposed to all the harmful elements and gases near the lake not only put their lives at risk on a daily basis, but shorten their lives, and they often don't live past their 50s. The mined sulfur will eventually be used in a wide variety of applications across different industries, such as to purify sugar, make soap, matches, cosmetics, rubber, and even explosives. Miners have been extracting sulfur here for more than 40 years, and around 200 miners work at the crater per day, and at times they work at night to escape the heat of the sun. 
Despite the many dangers this place holds, there's one thing that draws hundreds of tourists each day to see. That's the mesmerizing natural phenomenon of the blue sulfur flames. Gases are released at extremely high temperatures, sometimes reaching up to 600 degrees Celsius. When the sulfuric gases come into contact with the oxygen in the atmosphere, they ignite and burn, creating a blue flame. The blue color is due to the combustion of sulfur, which burns with a blue flame due to its chemical properties. During the day, the combusting sulfur flames resemble the familiar orange and red flames of normal fire. However, the sulfuric gases are still burning blue, but the bright sunlight washes the vibrant blue color out. Despite the risks, the allure of Kawa Ijin continues to draw visitors and workers alike, each seeking something different from this extraordinary place. For tourists, it's a site of nature's raw beauty. For the locals, it's a means of livelihood. Whatever the reason each person has, maybe it's simply the experience of standing on the edge of one of the world's most dangerous locations and having an adventure to tell their friends and family.